Hey everybody, I'm incredibly excited about today's video because it's going to show how one day within the next couple of weeks you're going to wake up and the worst feature in Power BI currently is suddenly going to turn into the best feature. And this is thanks to a incredibly talented programmer named Daniel Adekir who's been working for the past couple of years on Tabular Editor 3 which is going to be rolling out publicly um, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Um, I was fortunate enough after he showed the preview version in December to get into the beta program. So I've been using it every day now for about the past three months and it has really revolutionized the way that I use Power BI. So I want to take some time today and walk you through the basic features and show you how I think it's really going to change the way you use Power BI as well. So all of you will recognize this as the DAX editor window. And to call it an editor is really a stretch. It, it basically has no functionality whatsoever. Um, you can learn some keyboard shortcuts to get it marginally functional, but it, it's, not, it's not an acceptable editor. Um, and so for those who work in other development environments, for example, I work in R and I've always wondered why, why can't we get an editor like this? And the answer is that as of the release of Tabular Editor, we, we have all that and more. Um, and so one of the things I want to cover is configurability. Um, as you can see, we've got multiple windows here, and all of these are completely configurable. Um, so you can, you can move stuff around, you can pull stuff out in a really intuitive way and develop new sections. Um, you can move those around, you can resize those. And what you can also do is you can save those to, you can capture workspaces and then save those to a list of, of available workspaces so that if you've got, for example, you're working in best practice analyzer or you're doing search and replace, um, you can pop into a different workspace than if you're editing measures. And I found that to be incredibly useful. Um, it's also got themes, so if, for example, you're a dark mode fan, you can just pop right into dark mode. Um, and it's got a number of, of different can themes. Um, I happen to like this, this blue one. All the toolbars are configurable, the menus are configurable. And so basically you can just get this working exactly the way you want it to work and feel comfortable working. And given the amount of time you spend in Power BI writing DAX, I think that's pretty important. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is how TE3 um, intelligently assists you in writing your DAX. Um, one of the things that it's got, and we can we can just pop in here to a new measure um, and start writing some DAX, and you'll see right away um, how this how this is a real improvement. Um, so if we let's start off with a variable. Um, and we'll just make that a table variable. So V table. And there are just some really nice small features here. So for example, you don't have to worry about um, control enter or shift enter. Um, you just hit enter and it moves you to the next line and then F5 is what, what commits your code. Um, so here, if we um, calculate table, and you can see kind of the, the standard IntelliSense. But then when we, when we click this, what we see here is some additional information. So it's got information saying we're in context transition mode. Um, if we go here to calculate table, you'll see a hot link. And so you can click on that. And what that does is that brings you right to the DAX guide um, for additional information about the um, the function and so it's got got a lot of a lot of background capability and knowledge built into it um, one of the um, one of the really clear things um, that you begin to see right off the bat is um, in terms of error messages um, and I've, I've actually broken a measure here and what you can see is unlike unlike 
the regular DAX editor, which will just pick up one of these errors. I've broken three different portions of this measure. And you'll see here we're under analysis services. This will show you the one that the, the standard Power BI editor will pick up. But Tabular Editor 3 has what's called the semantic processor for DAX, and it will pick up all the errors and will give you a lot more information about those errors. So for example, if you look here under analysis services, it'll tell you that too few arguments were passed to all except and what the minimum count for the argument is, but it doesn't know where that, that error sits. The semantic processor, on the other hand, knows that it's in line three, it's in column nine, so it tells you right where where it starts. It gives you a tooltip to explain the error, and it gives you all the errors that it finds in the um, in the expression. Um, so too few arguments passed to the intersect, again with line and column. Um, it knows that this this variable is undefined, and so it really helps you in terms of of debugging. Um, Another really nice feature is this thing called code, code folding, where you can collapse your variables down and just get a better picture overall of what your measure looks like, particularly if you're writing long measures that go, go beyond a screen. Um, one of the really cool things is it works really well for measure branching debugging. Um, so one of the things that um, it'll do is if you if you look here at say total customers and you you right click on that it'll say show dependencies and what that'll do is it'll show you what objects depend on total customers and what objects um, it depends on. And so what you can do is something called DAX scripting. And this is a really interesting way of looking at our measure branching. So if we want to take, for example, these, these slicer harvest measures and then our total customer and range measures, and we can take out this, this new measure that we haven't completed yet. And if we, if we click on this grouping that we've got, you'll see an option called DAX script or script DAX. And we click on that. And what that does is that creates a script with all of our, our measures in one place. And we can, we can edit this. We can look at it in terms of how the, the measures branch from each other. And one of the, um, one of the really cool things we can do here is if we look here at um, the measures that we've got, in terms of uh, total customers in range. We've got a total customers in range one, total customers in range two, two different versions of the same measure. And what we can do is if we want, let's say, to take and refactor this result um, variable, we can rename this. And the incredible thing here is that what it'll do is it'll rename in scope. So you can see here that it tags both of these results, and we can change this to, um, let's say we want to call this outcome. And we've now changed that in the code. But up here, where we had result as well in a different measure, it knew enough to, to keep that outside the scope. So it's much smarter than just your average search and replace, which would have gone through and changed all those results. So we can actually take and pop open that, that search and replace window. And we can, through the workspace functionality, we can create a, a window for that. And then go through and you know do any sort of case matching or whole word matching, you know, find all, find previous, um, you know, edit this down um, either in the the single measure version or the, the script version. And then all we have to do is hit control S and it saves that back to the, um, the Power BI model. So at any point you can, you can do all this and you can choose to kind of keep experimenting and not save it back.
or you can get to a point you're comfortable with and hit hit save back. Um, so let's let's close down the the search and replace for now. Um, I want to show you a few other things. Um, we've got a built-in formatter um, for our DAX, so we can format the uh, the script as well, and we can change that to be you know long line or or short line format. Um, kind of continuing on the the debugging theme, um, we've talked about dependence and precedence. We've talked about um, DAX scripting. There are a number of other uh, things we can do. So we can take a look at our tables and just do a simple preview of the table, you know, going through and looking at, um, you know, each of the each of the fields in the table. Um, if we pop up here, the information column, it'll show us all sorts of information about measures, columns, the, the format, the data type, um, so broad range of information there um, for review. Um, the other thing we can do, other than just these, these simple table previews, is we can do um, what they call a pivot grid. Um, and that's, that's basically the equivalent of a pivot table in Excel or a, a matrix in Power BI. So if we go up here to create a new pivot grid, um, we'll see is something fairly similar to the the matrix visual and I'll show you how this works so we can go up here and uh, let's look for day of week name and we just drag that over onto our rows field um, we've got let's see a total customers measure we can use as our value and if we go back to our timetable here we can actually break that down by hour and we can use this to um, to do validation of our results um, it'll it'll run row totals column totals um, and it's a lot easier than creating a bunch of extraneous tables that actually physically reside in the model um, and you can you can just drag these off and you're back to the the simple table you can drag other other variables um, columns onto that that table so really nice nice functionality here as well um, so that is pretty much it for um, what I found in terms of the debugging oh no actually it's not um, there's a huge feature here, which is the DAX query. And this is something those of you um, who work in DAX Studio are going to be very familiar with. And what we can do here is we can, we can materialize tables. So this is kind of like your model new table. Um, so, for example, we want to take this, we're having, if we're having trouble with this, this measure, and we want to take this, filter function and we want to analyze it we can put it into a query and if you remember queries always start with evaluate and we paste that in here um, and we hit f5 and that will evaluate our um, our table here and so we can we can play with different elements of this so we can for example, we can take this, this out for now, and we can take and comment this piece out and hit F5, and we've got a different evaluation of just this, this first condition. So we can, we can do a lot in terms of debugging um, tables. If we go actually back to um, our measure here, one of the, uh, the one of the cool things you can do with regard to uh, measures is you can take and copy a measure into a, a DAX query um, 
And although it'll give you an error that says um, that it's not a um, it's not a table function, and let's just put evaluate up here. Um, expression specified in query is not a valid table expression. But what you can do is kind of a small cheat if you want to evaluate a measure is just put your your measure in the squiggly brackets and hit F5 and there you've got the value of your measure. So again really great functionality for for debugging. Um, the next thing I want to cover is um, scripting and we don't have time to get deep into this but I did want to show you um, the automated scripting features and basically if we go up here new C sharp script um, what we've got the ability to do is write some some basic code here um, or what we, you can do is if you're an analyst hub user what I've done is I've taken and if you search on tabular and analyst hub um, I've put a bunch of script snippets in there um, so this one automatically creates some measures on uh, selected measures in tabular editor so kind of your your most basic measure um, if you take this and just say copy code and then back into tabular editor and then paste that into the the script window and then just hit save as macro um, we can just type create some measures and we can do that we can do that model wide we can do that across a table we can do it across a column um, and then all we have to do to apply these macros is just go to the proper the proper scope whether that's model or table or column and then just right click macros and then just apply the the appropriate script and so we've got the sum measures um, I've also put script in here for format all of our DAX measures in the model and then set the aggregation to none so for example how many times when you drag an an ID number into a table um, does it automatically add that up and you don't want that you want to go to no summation so you can set that across the entire model with just one click if we just click right here that turns off summation and columns um, similarly if we go here and we now hit format all DAX that then formats all of our DAX um, using the, the DAX formatter based on whether we've chosen long line or short line and then we just hit control s to save that back to the the power bi file um, so that is a really quick tour through scripting the other thing that it's got is if you don't know c sharp which i don't um, it's got a, a macro recorder and so you can you can basically turn that macro recorder on perform the function you want to you want to automate and then use the code it creates um, in order to create that script um, without knowing a lot of a lot of coding yourself um, and then the last thing I want to cover is something called the best practice analyzer and if you've been watching Greg Phillips's uh, terrific series on best practices he's up through um, pillar 3 the, the DAX analysis pillar and um, is going to soon be doing the visualization one um, he's laid out a whole bunch of rules for for best practice and one of the really cool things in T3 is that it's got a best practice rule set and so if we if we open up the best practice analyzer and let's let's drag that out and give it its own window um, if you click on on here it's got um, it's got rules for local user rules for car model rules for local machine and we can we can add that in and then we can say include role from URL and again if we are working in analyst hub um, I've included the rule sets that uh, Daniel has published in his um, github archive and so if we 
we look here and we take this and just hit copy code and we go back to T3 and we say include rule file from URL and we just paste that into the the blank here and then what that does is that then pops up a whole series of rules for best practices and the amazing thing about this is it doesn't just show you the rules but for example you know don't use floating point uh, data types so what you oh here we go don't summarize numeric columns um, and what we can do is in any of these is it won't work for all of them, but it'll work for a large number where you can then say generate a fixed script and then you can hit run and it'll run that script and actually make the changes to your model and, um, and implement the best practice. So how cool is that? Um, so one of the things we're, we're talking about doing is creating a rule set to correspond to the enterprise DNA best practices. But this is this is an amazing way to improve your data modeling by just having it automate automatically go through and rule by rule, uh, table by table, highlight areas where you're not conforming to the the best practices. Um, so that is that is really kind of a very quick tour through tabular editor. Um, there are a whole lot more functions that we haven't covered. Um, there's there's whole uh, data modeling features, so you can diagram your data models. You can work with your relationships. Um, there's partitions where you can actually look at and edit your M code. Um, there's there's an amazing array of features here, and I've just kind of begun to scratch the surface. But hopefully, you can you can really see the way in which this provides you really expanded functionality and tremendous capability in terms of writing DAX, debugging DAX, um, improving your data models, um, improving just your general understanding of what's going on within your, your, your measures and your, uh, your, your tables. Um, so I've found it to be kind of a, a revelation. Um, I really don't work in Power BI at all from the time I finish my data modeling until I do visualization. And so I just, again, really want to thank Daniel for an amazing job um, putting this together. And it's it's really incredible with each new new release, he just keeps adding functionality to this. So it'll be hard to imagine what it's going to look like in even a few months from now, um, as good as it is already. So I um, hope that gives you some encouragement to to test it out, uh, see what you think, um, and see how it changes the way you use Power BI. So, as always, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.